Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk, where the podcast talks about a man's battle with mental health, his personal experiences, and his journey to be a better soul. Hosted by James Dean Littlejohn. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Gentleman's Talk. Um, hope you're all all right. Hope you've all had a good day. Um, so far, Monday, fun day. I used to say Sunday fun day, but Monday fun day because I've had the day off. So I've been kind of relaxing, ready for my new day tomorrow. Um, new job, new start, new f- new impact again. So going through the roller coaster of starting a new job. Anyway, I did upload a podcast. Unfortunately, um, I'd taken two 30 milligram co- co- uh, codings because I'd hurt myself and hurt my neck really badly. And uh, I, be- I came across really drowsy. It was It was a... It was a good subject, but I didn't deliver it very well. Um, and I'm conscious of that because at the end of the day, I like raw and I like unedited, as you will have discovered through my um, through my podcasts. But one thing I don't like is to sound mundane and drone, and that's what I'm conscious of. I, I'm conscious I don't want to be boring. I don't want to. I want to offer content that's really helpful. Um, and the s- specific subject that I was talking about is really relevant to mental health, I think, um, and that's made me passionate about getting back into it and redoing it today with a little bit more vigor and a little bit more passion of those words you say them like that as well don't you i'm real passionate <laughs> it's one of those words isn't it um so i wanted to re-deliver it um and i think it's a really important subject why was i encoding well if you'd have heard the last podcast and didn't fall asleep um and actually managed to listen to it you'd, you'd have probably understood why but i will re quickly talk about it re because there is some people that have given me feedback on this and have heard it so I don't want to obviously bore them but at the same time I've still got to make it relevant to the context now what do I mean by that well when Wednesday night last week I was um I was scaling Mount Everest um and on the way down I was abseiling thought I'd take an unusual route down so I abseiled down and then um threw on the old paramotor and decided to paramotor my way down as I hit the bottom I jarred my back and it sent a shock from my neck absolutely completely and utterly lying through my teeth sorry about that but I had to just try and make it sound better than a real story um I was uh grooming the dog uh, and I'd hurt my back I've obviously as you would hopefully know by now I've got severe back problems uh due to the accidents um and I manage that daily but sometimes when I'm you know, doing kind of stupid jobs, for instance, like washing the dog or grooming the dog, where you're almost bent over. You're, I put a lot of stress on my back. So I was conscious of this, and I was like, no, I've done, I need to go and have a shower. And normally what happens is I, I have a shower, and, and it warms the back up a bit, which alleviates some of the pain and relieves some of the pressure. Um, during the conversation, or during the dog grooming, my wife was helping me out, and... I could tell it was irritating me because I... hopefully that worked. Sorry, someone just gave me an incoming call and I had to quickly discard it. I didn't want to start again because I was anyway. Where was I? I was um, yeah. So I was upstairs and I was um, I'd had a shower. I'd had an argument and I was I knew I was getting irritable because it's not a job that I like doing, but I, it, I'm conscious that it saves money. So I was a bit like I can't be bothered to do this. I'm not a dog groomer by trade. I don't enjoy it, but I am quite good at it. So it's one of those ones where attention to detail, and, and it does, and, and it, I do make the dogs look nice, all prettied up. I've got a little shizu and a shorky, so they look amazing once they've been groomed, and they don't stink, because they're low to the ground. So they drag their todgers through everything, and they literally come in and then drag that everywhere else. Um, anyone with a dog will know that they are absolutely incredible, but they don't half drag some muck and mud in with them and stink. Um, and also, I've got this shizu that's got this absolutely ridiculous um act that he does when when my german shepherd is going for a a wee um because they're territorial and they're three males so i've got a german shepherd white german shepherd uh 43 kilogram beast and then i've got a shorky and a shizu so little tiny rats as i call them um if you know what a shizu looks like just imagine running full pelt into a stationary bus and the after effect of that, if you had a spongy face, flattened in would show you what a shizu looks like. But they are amazing dogs, little lions. But he has this habit of going under 
the German shepherd when he's urinating to mark his territory, but before the German shepherd is finished. So his face gets lashed. Now I know that there is some sites out there that the golden shower is appreciated, but unfortunately, um, not on a dog um, that then comes into your house. So I keep him groomed so it's just a quick wipe over and it's not matted in his hair or anything like that. Anyway, digressive a little bit there, but... So I, I was a bit irritable and I could tell that when... Um, my wife, who was helping me out at the time, um, had eaten a Spanish uh, dinner. So very garlicky, very heavy on the herbs. And I literally remember, I, I looked at her and I went, what did you eat for dinner? Your breath smells of shit. <laughs> so now, I know the how that sounds. Now, I acknowledged straight away that that was uncalled for. So I knew that there was a problem. What the problem was, is I was irritated. I was in a lot of pain. So I went up for a shower. I went, I can't do this because it's causing me to be an obnoxious twat. Excuse my French. But I didn't want to be that obnoxious prick. And I've been there before. And I was So instantly, as this is what I'm talking about. We nurture this. So I was conscious of how I was. So I was like, look, they're done to the best of my ability. Um, let's just clean up. I'm going to go for a shower to warm my back up so I'm not as irritable. Didn't say it like that, but you can imagine that's the context that I was going for. But obviously, it was enough friction in the air to, uh, you know, cut with a knife. So I went up, had a shower. Uh, as most men do, I contemplated everything in the shower. I analysed everything. I know a lot of people think that men do crazy stuff in the shower, but we actually don't. We just put the world to rights. Um, I certainly do anyway. I use the shower time as a, as a really good reflection time. It's like that extra sort of 10, 15 minutes of just cascading water down you. And you all know by now that I love my cold showers. So I had a shower, overanalyzed everything, and, and, it, and it came to, uh, you know, the crux of the argument was the fact that I was grooming a dog that normally costs about £25, £30, which is relatively expensive um, when, you're, when you're on a budget. So we haven't done it for a while because I've been on a budget. But I came down and I was like, look, we've argued and it's caused friction here because I've, you know, went to put the worlds to rights. And, and I apologise. We're just going to pay for a dog groomer. The dogs are fine with it. It's We're washing polish one of them and the other one will send to the dog groomer because buddy the shorky he's not really interested he's not he's a very nervous dog so he doesn't tend to but jeffrey jeffrey's an amazing name by the way if anyone should call their dog jeffrey jeffrey is awesome or dave if you've got a dog call it dave or jeffrey incredible names S stuff these normal these normal generic names for dogs call them proper human names they are an extension of humans um, my german shepherd certainly thinks he's a human anyway um so he's not like Jeffrey. So I was like, we'll come to the conclusion. We won't argue then. And, she, and, you know, it was quite an easy solution. It was a very easy fix. So I was conscious of that. So I was, I was um, happy with that. So I went up to stairs and, and I had my towel around me because I wanted to get the conversation dealt with because I was conscious that I was a prick. And I didn't want that to fester into the evening to ruin the, the you know, the, the romantic social evening that we try and have. <laughs> I laugh, you know, but you know what I mean? It just, it's an atmosphere we don't need, isn't it? So I was conscious of this. Sorted it out. A little bit of friction because I was a prick and I understood that. And I've said, you know, I, I understand you don't need to like me right now. But I appreciate that hopefully I've resolved the issue for future so we don't come across this again. Small wins, people. Small wins. So I went upstairs. And bear in mind, this is just me talking about my pain. This isn't anything major. Uh, so I went upstairs and um, put on some... Um, I've had to pause because I've got to say this out loud, but I put on some hair mask, um, some rejuvenating um, Australia SOS, I think it's called, or some crazy stuff. Other brands are available. Um, and I put this on my hair and I just needed to fluff it through. So as I fluffed it through um, with my towel, I yanked my head um, a little bit more, to, a little bit too much assertiveness in this, in yanking my head. And I yanked my neck and it ripped the back of my muscle. And instant sharp pain, instant anger. Wanted to chop my neck off. Was like, what have I done? I think I'm going to die. So anyway, I went to, uh, long story short, because I've, I've best part of nine minutes on this. Um, I 
went to A&E for five and a half hours and they just basically said to me I trapped a nerve and my muscles had spasmed in you know safety of the nerves so I was like okay so they said see us in five to six weeks and we'll get you an MRI scan I was like if this lasts five or six weeks then I'm going to be very very upset and I probably would have been on some sort of murderous rampage if I had to deal with this pain for any longer than a couple of days so and it has slightly subsided it's still there I still get a lot of pain um I'm conscious that I need to take painkillers but I can't because I want to talk to you with a clear clear focus in my head so anyway here we are so that's that was the basis of it so I took the codeine to to deal with the pain of that accident and when I did the podcast I sounded very mundane and droned on a little bit um to the point where I actually said to my friend when he gave me the feedback um I don't even know what I said because I just and bear in mind this was 50 or 55 on an hour long podcast that I don't remember saying anything because I was just so drowsy so tired and so much pain so I didn't really deliver it in the right way. So here I am, re-delivering. So hopefully you've had a little bit of an insight into why I've done that. So what was the, what was the topic? Why, why is it so special? Well, the topic, actually, is a topic that is really, really, really relevant to my journey. And from conversations with people, it's a relevant journey to a lot of people. And when you're struggling with mental health, this is the place I used to always go to, um, and what I used to do was I used to always question my existence. I used to question what is the purpose of life. Now, I don't know how to answer that question because I haven't even answered the question myself. But every time I'm low, every time I'm in a really negative place, the first thing I think of is what is my purpose? What is, my, what is the reason why I'm here? And... I remember having this conversation with my doctor and I turned to him and and I'd been with him for a a couple of years and I turned to him and said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I keep questioning why I'm here. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't know what is my purpose. I'm, you know, this was, you know, I was 35 at the time, roughly when I started talking about this with my doctor sorry about the rain I hope you can hear it it's therapeutic for me but I'm hoping it's not too bad for you just look at it as a little bit of white noise in the background um and I'm conscious so he sent around and said well what do you mean James and I said well I don't understand my purpose I don't understand why I'm here I don't understand what I'm here to achieve and he said well you need a goal have you got any goals and I was like I set myself goals all the time but Sometimes I set them as unachievable things and sometimes I set them as achievable, but they're long term and, I, and I'm very fixated on quick fixes. And he said, well, if, if you don't have a purpose, he said, without sounding sexist, and please don't take this as a sexist route, but um, I'm very old school. You know, I was born in the 80s, unfortunately. So I'm very much of a mindset that uh, I, you have to look at it as, as my upbringing. So I was very... He basically would speak to me like that, and and it would be like, well, normally the purpose in a a life for a man is to provide for his family, is to better himself, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, um, but ultimately, be a protector. And then the female's role is predominantly, and I know that we're changing with current climates, but I have to look at it from my experience and and how I've been raised. And they say the women are, are normally family people they 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 have children and then they nurture those children um agreed a lot of the time they go back to work and you know it becomes a a joint effort and that's what your existence is is to procreate well as anyone would know listening to this we are all changing our dynamics in life and we look for more all the time and as i said in in the the original podcast, what really spurred this for me is I was playing Dying Light, and I, I don't know if you've ever played Dying Light, but it, it's a really good zombie game. Um, and as I said as well, anybody that has played games will be set up for a zombie apocalypse because we all know how to deal with it. Um, but I was playing Dying Light too, very much like um, The Walking Dead, similar theme but on a game, absolutely incredible. Um, so I was playing that, and I went into this certain area, and then this this person said to me, um, 
more people die. I said high on the thing. This is how they put it. I don't know. You know I'm not talking verbatim. I'm not saying exactly as I said, but the general gist of it, which which spurred on the the need for me to want to talk. Um, more people die um, from suicide than they do from the virus, and that's what he said. And the virus is the zombies. And he, the guy, said, "Why?" And he said, "People are killing themselves because they don't know what their purpose is." And Look at it the context of the game. If, you, you're in a zoo, if you're in a zombie apocalypse, you're not just going to go to the shops on a normal day, but daily basis. You're confined. If you've seen The Walking Dead, you're confined to a specific area, moving around. So you don't go to work. So everyone loses their purpose because you haven't got work to try and strive in. Um, and very much I focused on... My existence was focused on work. I was very selfish, and I even had a conversation with my friend tonight, um, which I'll talk about, and... Um, and in that conversation, it was we, we agreed that I used to look at my work-life balance as 80% work, 20% life. Um, and that's including my family. So you can fully appreciate I was invested in my goal was to be amazing at my job. Um, unfortunately, there was nowhere to go in my job. I'd reached the top early and it was almost like a um, dead man's shoes. <laughs> you were just not going to get promoted. This is where I was. And that is difficult for someone who who questions their existence all the time. If you look ahead and you're, you know, I'd reached the, the pinnacle of my, you know, the top of my point at 35. And I was like, so do I see myself doing this at this level on this money, the same thing until I'm 67? Absolutely not. I had to make that decision and that is when I made some really drastic decisions. I took huge, huge pay cuts, um, lost out on almost £800 a month um, and I have done for the best part of a year because I sacrificed money over family because money I can always get back, time I can't get back um, and that is uh, a nice saying. I believe it was from Bruce Lee actually or... Um, Oh, I don't know the other character's name. The Chinese, um, oh, what's his name? The one that done Shanghai Shanghai Nights. It'll come to me. But anyway, uh, I think it was one of those two. And they said, you know, you can get money back, you can't get time. So travel and enjoy life. I didn't do that. I, I chased money and constantly. And I realised that actually my work-life balance was massively out of kilter. And I was striving to get to a position where I just wanted to keep working because that was my goal, was was working. And that's what I'd set myself, that goal. I didn't know what the actual goal was. It was just to earn money and, you know, not actually appreciate the money. <laughs> so I was in a really difficult situation. But that's mental health for you. This is a journey. So I took the massive sacrifice in the know that here I am three days away from a year since I left that that organization um which was dead man's shoes going nowhere and they never cared or looked after me um to an organization now where within three days from a year i'm now in a better position i was when i left there and i've worked tirelessly for this last year doing education education and education in the know that before i'm 41 because that was my goal before I'm 41, my goal was 40, technically I'm still 40, to get into a position that I will enjoy my life. In a financial situation, that I can look after my family and have fun, go on holidays, do the good things. And I've managed to do that. And it's been absolutely horrendous for a year of learning a new job, meeting new people, learning the education do an education almost 24-7 to get certificates, but at the same time needing the experience because certificates in today's world means nothing. If you've got a certificate with experience, it means everything. And I built myself up to a place where I have sat for a one and a half hour interview with five people on the panel, almost breaking me down systematically so I could pick myself up with the right questions and that is how they did it and and it was i am you know i'm moving into a very very good role um a very exciting role with travel and all sorts so i'm super excited that i've worked hard and it's finally hopefully paying off and it gives me a better future so that was my goal um but it was crazy how a game 
took me to spur that on. And it's a really important thing because as a female, I think you have a different mindset. You, you, I certainly, when I've spoken to females, and I'm not categorising females and males and breaking it all down like that because I don't want to alienate myself from the world by, by having that. But what I'm talking about is this is my experiences. But from talking to women, they all have their own goal. And certainly most of the women I spoke to have got children. So they look, they say, well, we're here to you know nurture my children. Um, I even had a conversation with a friend of mine earlier that sort of, they split up recently with their partner. And um, they sort of said, you know, the children are my life, but, you know, they're 22 now and uh, one of them's 22 and one of them's 24 and they're leaving, they're leaving the house. And they said, well, I've got nothing now. So it can still happen. You have a goal until your goal is gone. And that is, you know, the, the kids are moving on. So they still suffer from that. And I certainly allude back to uh, my own experience in that. And I got a personal experience with that myself. And that was when I remember leaving, and I left early. I left at 17, um, my house, and my brother left at 16. So in the space of, um, you know, a year and a half, I think it was, my mum lost her two boys. And I, not lost as in lost, but from a very young age, my, you know, my brother joined the military and I joined the military. And from a very young age, my mum lost her two boys. I mean, we st- she still had a daughter um, and my sister. Um, but she lost that impact. Now, me and my brother, we're quite outgoing. We're very adventurous. We're very fun. We're very noisy. We're very loud. And when we get together, we're absolute, like I call us legends, but <laughs> we are absolute nightmares. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, when you lose that big, those big personalities from a house, it's a big impact. Now, I didn't think about that because I was on my own journey. I left. I did my own thing. But I later found out that my mum was um, had to take medication because she wasn't used to it. She wasn't used to the place being so quiet and not having to nurture and look after boys and look after her sons. It, it would be gone. And, you know, I left at 17 and I've never been back. Um, I've, I go back, obviously, to see my family and I've got a very close relationship with them now. But boys, I don't know if they tend to do that, but they then latched onto my sister and, and that became their relationship then. Um, so it, even when you think you've got a goal, it can still get disrupted by the natural progression of life and your kids will eventually go. Now I'm the opposite to that because I left so early. I'm very much like I force my kids, not force them, but you know what I mean? I tell them to go out, enjoy life, experience life, get, get, a, you know, what do you want to do? I'm constantly on at them to try and help them. If you want to do this, how do I help you? Because I want them to have a good life and I want to make them have the best life they can and I want them to experience life now when they're young you know because they don't need to be financially independent they can still be under our books if you like so I can still nurture them and still look after them but they don't have the financial constraints of life like we all do mortgages and all the other things so I'm like get out there enjoy travel see people you know my daughter said to me she's in her final three months and she said can I go to Butlins and I said for a day with her friend and I had to think about it because I was like oh, how much is this going to cost me because I still have to weigh out the pros and cons of cost she said oh um nothing I said uh, their dad's booking it and we're going to go along for the day I was like absolutely get out go along I'll see you when you come back I'm very for that and my girls are very independent because of that um but I've spoke to people and like what you, you know you, you you want them to go and I'm like yes I do and then my wife is, is completely the opposite she doesn't want them to go but I'm like no they need to go because they need to experience life they don't need to be surrounded by their parents and the boring stuff we do on a daily basis plus they absolutely do my head in no they don't they love them to bits they do do my head in though three girls hence the reason why I'm very old and grey um, early on and uh, I have a, a cabin where I sit and just chill um so we we were talking about this and it was just it, you know all these little digressions but it, they mean so much because we all need a goal and a purpose well what is a goal what is your purpose and even just talking to my friend tonight who gave me the initial feedback has said that the podcast was great um and he got a lot out of it which was amazing because that's what it's for obviously i didn't deliver it which is my fault and, and this is why i'm rectifying that with a new context i'm little bit more lively hopefully and just basically just here i've got a a glass of orange there we go 
instead of gin, <laughs> which kills me because I like my gins. I do like my gins. Um, and he said to me that he spoke to uh, one of our friends and he seems in a very dark place. And one of the things he said was, um, I don't understand my purpose. Now, it's very easy to say that. And I don't really have an immediate remedy. I'm not a doctor. I can't subscribe something that's just going to make that go away. But what I can do is give you what I've learned to do. And trust me, I still get days. I haven't spoke for the best part of a week because I've been on a roller coaster of emotions. Mental health is a journey. Well-being is a journey. And, and we don't look after ourselves enough. And Christ, we're going from a, a pandemic. We've gone from an economic collapse into a pandemic, into, you know, the pandemic supposedly overnight has disappeared now. Um, and it's gone. We don't seem to be interested in it. But at the same time, literally, as that, that, that full stop closed and we put a full stop on that and that chapter closed, we moved straight into a world crisis where we've almost got World War Three with the threat of nuclear. So our mental health and well-being is constantly being challenged, isn't it? All the time. You're trying to reassure your children. You're trying to raise your children. You're trying to reassure your own future. I found out that um, only yesterday that a friend of mine who's 38 years old uh, just just turned 39, he passed away and died of a heart attack. So it's very much like you need to appreciate life. We're not all. Um, and someone did say to me one day that, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, but you're like, you know, one in a trillion chance that you were here or whatever it is. Someone will hopefully correct me. But there is a massive percentage of why you are here. So you are a gift just to be here. When all those sperm met the egg, you were the one sperm that decided to create to be created. So you are, um, you are important. You your purpose is to to enjoy life. You have been given this gift of life, and so much. And I, it's easy for me to say because I'm in a good mood. Yesterday, would I have said this? No, I wouldn't have done. Tomorrow, will I say it? I don't know because I don't know what tomorrow brings. We, like I said, we're constantly being challenged on our mental health and well being, and. It, it just resonated me with me that we have a gift that we're here, an absolute gift. And to procreate is another gift. You've given another gift to someone else. You've got bricks and mortar, which however form you've got it, whether it's a mortgage, rent or whatever capability you have, you've got a shelter over your house, over your head. And that's really important to have a safe environment to live in. Not all of us are blessed with that. So sometimes you've got to look around and go, okay, what is the purpose of my existence? Well, we all question that, don't we? And we all say, well, what am I here to do? And I've found from my own experiences that the time that I think like that is when I'm not socialising, when I'm not setting myself goals, when I'm not looking forward to a holiday. So basically, the crux of my argument, now I have some clarity in my head, the reason you're here is to enjoy yourself, is have fun, enjoy your life. Yes, we are constrained with financial burden to do those things. Then what you need to do is set yourself a goal to work harder, to progress into a situation where you're earning more money and then develop a decent work-life balance because so much of us don't do that. We go out and work, 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 and we think our, our lives are great. Um, there was a friend of mine, um, and I'm going to talk openly about him because um, I don't know whether he listens, but um, his story speaks volumes to me because he left a secure job um, that he'd been there for years, and it gave him just about enough financial stability. I say just about enough. The person in question has nice things. So it depends on what you class as just enough. You know, if you can afford a £1,000 iPad um, or you can afford an iPhone or an iWatch or an Xbox with games, if you can afford to drink, if you can afford to go out, if you can afford, you know, any th these things, then you can afford to live. It just depends on what you want to get out of life. That's the really important part is what you want to get out of life. Me personally, I was very fixated through my materialistic stage of my mental health journey. 
I was very fixated on material objects. I wanted to own the best thing, the latest thing. I want the biggest TV. I want the nicest car. I want the electric scooter. I want the iPad. I want the iPhone. I want the computer. I, do you see what I mean? But everything I've said there at the start of that conversation was, I want. Do I need it? Do I need an iPad? No. At best, I need a fairly decent phone that I can do everything on. But the fact of the matter is, do I need all of these things? No. Do I have them now? Yes. Am I in debt from them? Uh, yes and no. I don't class it as a debt because it's it's something that I've managed. It's something I can manage. I haven't got myself in a situation I can't manage. So debt can be perceived in many ways. Debt I class as something that's unmanageable. Unfortunately, in today's society, we do rely on credit cards, loans, to just survive it is the way that the the structure has made us think that that's what we need until you can pull yourself away from those materialistic objects and that's what I'm trying to do I'm trying to learn to pull myself away from the materialistic side and actually go do you know what I'm 40 year old last year was the first time that I'd been away on a lad's holiday so I didn't even experience because I left school I joined college became a mechanic trained for three and a half years in mechanics, got fully qualified, quit. Um, sorry, three, it's two, two and a half years, sorry, just, just on the crux of three years um, when I left. And I decided then, no, I want to join the military. So I'd quit almost to the day of getting qualified. I went, no, I'm mad enough now. I'm going to go and join the RAF and, and hopefully travel around. And I did that and then, you know, got made redundant and then moved on to another job. Um, but all of that time, I didn't really have many holidays. I had nice cars. I had nice things in my house. I had nice clothes on. I had always smelt nice because I had nice colognes. But did I have any experiences? No. And the eye-opener for me last year was going away with my best mate for the first time. And bearing in mind, I've known him 28 years. And that was the first time we'd ever been away, apart from like the odd camping day here and fishing. But an actual week away with my mate, um, doing, you know, Crazy things because there's no one to tell me that, you know, you, you're doing something stupid there, James. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like a, like your wife or your kids. And that made me really realise where I've gone wrong. And I said to myself, I need to change. I need to set myself a goal. My goal is to work harder, to have a really good holiday and go and experience a week away of being pampered or two weeks away of being pampered and then come back and then look forward to weekends of socialising. And I had a conversation actually with my friend today um, and it's really crazy, but we've hardly spoken over the last couple of weeks um, and I felt really bad and I do blame myself. And then he turned around and said, no, it's 50-50. I have the same technology you have. We just don't utilise it. But... I haven't seen him in two weeks, and that was since I went around his house. Now, I've got a bar in my house, and you know I've booked for the for my friends to come around and see me in a couple of weeks. And I just thought to myself, we constantly plan, like, yeah, well, do you fancy doing something in a month's time? Well, no, actually, I fancy doing something this weekend or tonight. Or and it is difficult when you live away from someone, but we've got all this technology and we don't do anything with it, and. It, it it nurtures that negative environment. And as I said to you previously, my friend, um, and I was talking about him, he, he moved from his secure job and went into what he perceived as being a good job. But it was, you know, it was self-employed. It was longer hours, more time away from his missus, uh, more time away from his house. And I, and I did kind of went, to, I did kind of say to myself, you're going to be working longer hours and... I don't know what the appeal is because it's not like you're going to be earning massive money to, to you know, before you know it, you're a millionaire. Well, my advice would have been pump yourself, and my advice was to him, was get yourself qualified, put some money aside. Um, you know, he was at the time where he was, um, you know, they were they they'd shut everything down because of the pandemic so all the all the shops were closed but the government were actually offering incentive schemes for education because they've realized that places were closing down so i said to him well jump on see what you can reskill retrade that's what i did at 39 you know completely retraded to a new trade uh, and a whole new skill and i've learned it oh, 
learnt it in very loose terms. I'm at the base level. Excuse me while I just take a little sip. It's getting to that time where I get a little bit airy. So I'm going to take a little sip to dry the throat, to, to, to wet the whistle, as they say. Wet the whistle. Um, and my advice from the time was, if you're sure, mate, then, you know, take the leap. But you're, you're, you're sacrificing quite a lot. And I think that part of the reason he's, he's a bit low at the moment is because I think that potentially he's, he's you know, realised he's not made that right decision. And it's not for me to say because everyone's in their own journey and everyone has their own path. Um, I made a decision to retrade, requalify, And I looked at health and safety and I went, well... I looked at it through the pragmatic approach. I can say that because I'm in health and safety. Um, But I looked at the pragmatic approach and I went, health and safety is not going away. If anything, it's going to get bigger than Ben-Hur, isn't it? Environmental is going to be absolutely massive because of the climate change. So I was looking at sectors that I know aren't going anywhere. And I know, if anything, they're going to become bigger and bigger. We, We... Every day is health and safety. So I went, well, I really want to get into health and safety, but I want to do it the proper way. I want to do the qualifications and I want to do the, 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 you know, the chartered status, if you like, which is what I've done. And I'm part of an accreditation, three accreditations now, actually. And then the best part of this year I've managed to, and this isn't, you know, putting a trumpet on my bum and, um, you know, blowing it and going, I'm not blowing my own smoke on my bum. But I have... In, in in less than a year, by three days, started a job, learnt, um, done my level six qualifications in health and safety, which has instantly given me my technical status in the IOSH accreditation um, sector. And I'm working towards the chartered membership, which is, you know, the basically is the bee's knees of, of everything. I've also worked along and done my level five in in um, diversity and inclusion which has given me my chartered management um, institution being part of that so I'm now a chartered manager Um, and at the same time I'm now got two courses booked for my new role where um, I'm looking at you know another sector which is going to give me my chartered membership in occupational um, hazards so I'm trying to do it properly and I'm trying to be a credible person in the future and I want to be as big as I can so they're the goals I'm setting and that's how I would have done it now one of the things my friend said to me was because he'd listened to my podcast and he said I've just spoke to I I had a a walk with my friend last week and that's one of the things he said what why am I here and it is very much the first question you ask yourself when you're in a low mood is why am I here what is my purpose in life because it's very easy to say well we're just here and Unfortunately, if you've not experienced mental health, depression, um, you, you, you won't really have felt it. And I'm not, I'm not taking it away if you haven't, but you wouldn't have felt the extremities of what that word or that, those sentences, that sentence can mean is what's my purpose. Because you don't look at the impact of what that, in, what that sentence can mean. Now, to a normal person, you know, uh, who's just going through life and you go oh dude you know oh god what's the purpose of life eh and you can say it like that when you're depressed you say what's my purpose why am i here what what am i here to achieve the knock-on effect to that then is because you can't answer that question because i don't think anyone can answer that question properly in your context you can answer it for your own journey and you could say, well, my purpose is to raise and look after my kids and um, go on holidays and travel. It's a really easy thing. Or my purpose is to become vice president or my purpose is to become president. Do you know what I mean? Whatever it could be, it could be right up to the top scale, um, right down to the lower scale. You know, my purpose is to just get up in the morning. You could be one of those people. And if you're happy and content with that, then so be it. That's fine. That's your journey. But when you're depressed, that one sentence, what is my purpose? can reverberate so much that you start questioning absolutely everything. You start questioning um, why I'm here. And then you go into a dark place. And then you turn around and go, if I don't know what my purpose is here, why am I here? There's no point. And that's when you start getting into those really horrible places. And those horrible places are places you don't want to ever visit. I visited them. Um, 
and they're not a nice place to be. Um, how do you help someone out who's going through that? Well, I don't really know. It depends on your relationship with that person. Um, I can offer advice because I've lived it. And I don't mean that I can offer advice you can't. I mean, I can try and offer advice. And that's what I've tried to do in this podcast is offer advice to help you. Um, and my advice would be set a goal, set yourself a plan. Um, and I, one of the things I've done is I've given myself a five year plan for work. So my five year plan for work is to get to a certain level and work to get to that level. But at the same time, maintaining this work life balance that I've really grasped in this last year of my family is more important than anything, because at the end of the day, my family make me happy. If my work doesn't make me happy, gone are the days, and I said this to a person in work, actually, they said, um, you know, gone are the days where we stay with a company, we stay with a company for, you know, 30, 40 years. If anything, that's actually, it's been researched that that is a really negative thing to do for your for your own men- mental health and well-being. You are supposed to challenge yourself. And we used to think of it as a bit of an accolade. Oh, you know... Terry's been with us 50 years and you see him and he's literally in his um, chair that is um, fag stained, piss stained because he's that old. He can't control himself and his tenor for men aren't working, but he's a legend. He's, he's not, he's not working hard anymore, but he's a legend. He's part of the woodwork. And that's what we used to say, didn't we? Now we don't, we, we don't, we, we, we've recognized that actually it's better to move around. Um, and what they say to do is every five years, you should move around. You should move jobs every five years. Otherwise, you will just get comfortable and you won't you won't progress. And I've certainly seen that. Since I left, but I left for the right reasons. I left for the reasons that I knew I was nurturing myself to a better life. That is what you've got to do. If that doesn't work out for you and you take the plunge and... This would be my advice to my friend when I when I touch base with them would be like, if it's not working out because you're not enjoying your new work life balance, then stop. Stop before it gets so bad that you don't know where to go. Stop, move on. And if that means going back with the tail between your legs, and I spoke about this in my last podcast, um, you know, the whole reason why I got into this was because I don't know my purpose. Um, and one of the biggest things that I had to do was um, I was when I was on that holiday last year um, I started a GoFundMe page because I really wanted to make a change I wanted to stop working for the man I wanted a purpose in life and I thought if I work for myself I will put in 100% or 110% and I'll get 110% back but it will give me something to focus on daily because it's my own business it's very easy to go to someone else's business or someone else's life and work hard for them and they will reap the benefits of you working hard. But your whole life stays on a plateau. If I, I've, I've discovered when I went into this, when I went into work that, um, and this has been in every employment I've been in, that you can go into work, and I had these employees in my last job, you can go into work and you can put in 110%. You can work alongside people that will put in 40%, but they still get the same pay. They still get the same wages and the same perks at the end of the day, but they're only putting in 40%. You're putting in 110%. Even when you write them up in bad, or not bad, but because you never write a bad review, but when you do their appraisals at the end of the year and you go, you need to work harder. Yeah, nice one, mate. Because he's still getting paid. There's no punishment anymore for not working hard. You don't get sacked. It's really hard to get sacked unless you're a complete incompetent fool. There's so many jumps an employer has to go through. Well, unfortunately, my ethos is I want to work hard. I like working hard. But what I've stopped doing is putting in 110% because it doesn't get you anything. So I put in the right percentage to make sure that I'm delivering successfully every day. Now, that could be 40% on that day because there's not a lot going on. But at the same time, I'm still maximising my house time. I can still put in 100% of the time, my time in work, but I make sure that 100% is fine, but at five o'clock I close that laptop and my fi- my time now is with my family. At the weekend, I don't log in. I don't touch anything. I've completely moved away from my phone, being a, my personal phone, being associated with my work phone. 
because I don't want people contacting me. I don't want people to have my mobile phone number outside of work. If you want to talk to me in work's time, you talk to me on the work mobile. If you can't contact me on the work mobile or work laptop, it's because I'm uncontactable, mate. As in, I'm enjoying my work life. My, my, my real life, sorry. Talk to me when in the work hours. And so much of us don't do that. And so much of us burn ourselves out to get nowhere and to question everything. Um, it's a very difficult situation. And I think that one of the things I've really realised since I've been on this journey since January, and it's early doors and we're only talking eight, eight, eight nine weeks or whatever it is, ten weeks probably about that. So it's very early in, in, in stages life. But I've already realised now that you need... I, I dwindled a little bit last week and, and that was clearly apparent when I stopped engaging my friends on WhatsApp. Um, and that was reinvigorated today when I spoke to my friend and I said, I'm relying on people to perk me up and I shouldn't. I need to work on trying to perk myself up. And I wasn't. And, and then last week I didn't, um, at the tail end of last week, I didn't do my cold showers. I didn't do my meditation. I didn't do my reflection time. I didn't do any of that. And I didn't do it for the walks. I promised myself and I didn't do yoga. And what's happened is I sunk. I sunk into a horrible place. Now, I don't believe I'm pushing that on people because I don't want to push that on people. But I also acknowledge that by doing that, I stopped engaging with those other people, so they stopped engaging with me. It becomes a team effort. You have to engage positively all the time. If you're not engaging positively, then you're just nurturing that negativity. And that is what people want to avoid is negativity. I certainly do. I will avoid anyone that's negative like a plague now because my mental health and well-being can't deal with it. And I don't want to deal with it. I just want to talk positivity. And this is why I'm talking about the negatives of life and how they go along. And, and just but I've had inspiration for this podcast by talking and getting feedback from other people. And that's where feedback comes in. So relevant to get feedback. It's unbelievable. And I can talk about things and I can relate them to my own scenarios. And I do. Even last week um, when I was closing down because I'd been shut away from my old job because I, you know, handed in my notice. I wasn't getting any correspondence. Well, that's difficult for me because I like to feel like I'm helping people. So I didn't have any work for the best part of a month. Um, And I was just sort of plodding through. Was, that made it really difficult to me. And then I started questioning my existence. I started questioning and I started going through that thought process. Why am I here? What's my purpose? What am I here to achieve? And then I nurtured that into a, a, even more negativity. Well, my girls are happy. They're they're old enough now and, you know, they're going through their own life. And I was like, right, so what, so what am I doing here? Why am I here? So it's very easy to say, isn't it? It's very easy for me to nurture those difficult situations. Very easy for me to say, what the hell's going on? But at the same time, I'm experienced enough now to acknowledge those negative thoughts and go, stop. This is just a lull. Relax and enjoy it until you get to your new job. And then you'll hit the ground running because you know that before this month, you were very busy. You're not busy now. So... That's why. Just put it to put it in context. And also, I do think that we, we as a nation, and, and we said it again today in the conversation, we had a brilliant conversation today, and we were talking about the negativity of, of, of the winter and how it drink, brings us all down and we can't get out and about. And I said to my, my friend, I was like, it was difficult because I wasn't financially stable enough to go and do stuff indoors. We were saying, you can go bowling. Well, yeah, you can go bowling, pay £30, but two adults playing a, a game of bowling um 30 quid will last about 20 minutes at best when you've got a big group of 10 of you's but i don't have a big group of 10 not because i don't want a big group of 10 but because i'm not interested in a big group of 10 because there's a lot of hassle that comes with those groups of 10. so it's a personal preference i've taken on board so summer it's very easy because for a fiver i can go and play a round of golf um, you know, pitching park. I'm not talking proper golf. And, and you know, we can go and take a picnic to a park and have a few tinnies and chew the fat and throw some bat and ball around. So it's free. Do you know what I mean? You're just paying for fuel. When you start doing indoor stuff, I mean, I went ice skating last Monday. Had an ama- amazing time. But when I broke down the cost of that ice skating, it was almost £75 just for an hour's skating. And that was getting in there. We paid £7.50 to have this push around um, penguin 
for my daughter to go on. £7.50 for what looked like had been there since 1962. It looked like it was awful. It was just battered and bruised. And I thought, you've got 20 of these. You're charging £7.50 every single day for a morning or an afternoon session for the same piece of shit that is practically fallen to bits to, to, for the experience for my daughter to go around. Now, I actually thought they would have been free because I've, spe- I've spent money to get into your establishment. But that just covers the cost of rental of the shittest skates in the world. Excuse me while I take a little sip. Um, so, £7.50, well, I've got three girls, two of them needed one of them. Um, that's 15 quid on top. Then I had to travel from Salisbury to Basingstoke which was a tenner in fuel. And then I had to pay the cost of £12 per person to, to, go, to go ice skating. So when you put it in context, it's bloody expensive to do things. So no wonder we get sad in the winter when we can't see our friends because the weather's awful. Or, you know, you can come around and socialise, but it just becomes drinking, doesn't it? You know, and staying indoors. And it's we're not into that. We're into socialising. But we did recognise that. We had a conversation and we said we need to be a bit more proactive and actually come round and actually make the effort. And we've done that and we will, we've addressed that instantly today. And I need to, I'm going to the gym tomorrow, so I'm actually going to take a photo of myself in the morning and I'm going to put that in our little group and go, this is me now and I'm going to do this weekly for my motivation to say, am I changing? Because we need that positivity. And it will stop me from eating crap and just being a little bit more switched on. So I'm I'm conscious that I've been droning on for quite a while, but it's a really important subject, isn't it? It's it's when you're saying to yourself, I don't know my purpose, you've got to give yourself goals, you've got to you've got to look at the positives of the future, not look at what's my purpose in life, because it'll always end poorly. But actually go, my purpose actually is to re-engage my friends or my purpose is to be more positive. That was my purpose this year, was to be more positive. Push aside the mental health problems. Deal with what I have to deal with. And that can mean that some weeks I go a bit quiet. That can mean that some weeks I don't want to go out and socialise. But nine times out of ten, I'm trying to be positive because I know that going out and socialising and seeing people will be positive. And... I'll only do that with people that want to re-engage with me because for years I engaged with people and I constantly did the travelling, I constantly did the walking, I constantly did the, the riding the bike to see them or whatever it was. And I and I actually was like, this is quite draining now because it's a one-sided friendship or a one-sided relationship. And I didn't like that. So I went, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I'm just interested in people that want to spend time with me and, and nurture that kind of positive future. And then look to booking things. So as this weather subsides and the sun comes out, we'll go like, let's go this, just do this off the cuff stuff. Because we've all been locked away for the best part of two years and we need to get back to our normal selves. Um, One of the difficulties is I live away from most of the people that I socialise with. We've all moved to 20, 30 miles away. So it's not like I'd love to go back to the old days where, you know, we just knocked on the door and out you came and played. You know what I mean? And then you you went back home again we took it for granted and that's why another reason why I try to get my kids to go out and enjoy themselves with their friends because we all take our own journeys which can ultimately lead to us all departing and and going to different parts of the country and making it more difficult to see each other Um, and especially as you've got kids when you've got kids it's really hard to accommodate people coming round because the kids are there Um, but you know I can offer you some sort of kind of support that I can appreciate that but at the same time acknowledge that when the kids do go you'll have that friend that friendly place for to to invite people around and we even spoke today and I said about one of my friends who lives down in the on the coast I said well we'll touch base with him and we'll just travel down so we've just got to worry about ourselves and we'll get him to bring the seats down because it's on his doorstep uh, and we'll spend the day you know engaging in conversation and fun do you know what I mean uh, and vice versa, come to mind. But you don't have to do anything. Just jump in your car, come to me. I will supply the food, the booze and the and the entertainment. So many places don't do that. So many friends don't do that. But that's what it should be. You should just... And I do it very much with my friend, my best friend. I, was, I don't go with anything. I literally go, dude, I'm getting in my car. I'm driving to you. You entertain me. You feed me. You drink me, <laughs> so to speak. And I'll get up in the morning and go, when you come to mine, it'll be exactly the same. 
And we've started to do that and started to incorporate that. So as I've droned on, I hope this is a better conversation and a better podcast for you, but it's a really important subject and it's a really interesting subject. And on my next podcast, because I've had to do this one in place of that one, but on my next podcast, I want to talk about um, positives and how to alleviate those um, those those scenarios. When you've got them in your head, I want to nurture how you can deal with them. More so as a friend, um, because it's difficult to... For, for for you to do that there is things i do um coping mechanisms and such like but i will nurture that uh for you but what i will do is is try and give friends people topics and things just to talk about and re-engage um it's a difficult difficult situation to be in when you're like that and i've been in it many many times and i know for a fact i will be in that but situation again um it doesn't go away um but i'm hopefully adopting coping mechanisms that will help me deal with that to be a better friend be a better partner be a better person Um, and you can certainly do that for the friends that you're around um, and help them through these difficult times Um, and it might it might impact your life and they might be so grateful that they become a closer friend to you Uh, it's really important but I'll leave it there Again, as always, feedback is really appreciated. I really love feedback. So it's what helps me talk. It helps me realise when I'm gone wrong as well. As I did, I went wrong. Great podcast yesterday, but delivered in a piss poor way. Um, And hopefully this is a little bit more upbeat for you. Um, It's a difficult situation, a difficult topic to talk about for some people. And the problem is that topic can lead on to really negative things. So we need to grasp it early and talk about these early. Um, and this is the whole purpose of talking and being open. I talk openly with a lot of people now. And I've had a lot of conversations about mental health and well-being. It's re- I'm really passionate about it. Um, because I struggle so much myself. And I do take things, a lot of things to heart. And I am very emotional. Um, and I do, I like socialising. I really do. But it's a difficult world to socialise in. Um, one thing I, you know, one th- one thing that is is clearly apparent is 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 it's hard to open up to people because you don't know how it's going to be greeted and how it's going to be received, and you also don't know if they're going to know. And and we'll do if someone came to me and said, "What's my purpose in life?" Well, five years ago I'd have gone, "I don't know, mate." So I can't help them. But now I can go. Well, actually, your purpose in life is to appreciate the fact that you've been given the gift of life in the first place, and that gift of life will pull you onto other things and better places set yourself goals set yourself targets if you're not happy in your situation do whatever you can to get out of that situation and make your life better only you can appreciate that so uh yeah everybody thank you very much and uh really appreciate you listening and um hopefully so i just my daughter coming in there um, and hopefully I've given you some positive thoughts, some food for thought, as my friend put it. And it is food for thought. And it is it is ways to, at the end of the day, as a friend, you're not just there for yourself. You're there for that person. And we forget that a lot. So you might be able to research some stuff to help him out. And you might be able to research some stuff to help yourself out. Because we we need these friendships and these bonds in life to get through life. Everyone I have a bond with... Um, impact my life so much whether it's positively or negatively um and one thing i've 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 recently engaged like i said with one of my uh, friends that was never really a friend but such a shame because we're similar in so many ways um but i've re-engaged with him and he's a very positive spark in our little group always positive and i absolutely love that and he goes through his own problems and i'm hopefully helping him he certainly helps me with his positivity. And again, you know, I, I've re-engaged, I re-spoke to my brother today and I must finish on that because it is actually incredible. Um, I spoke to my brother today. He, he said to me, you know, he's going through his own little things and I, f- I fully appreciate that. And I've given him a little bit of space, but I re-engaged with him today and we had an hour conversation and it was absolutely fantastic. Even to the point where at the end he said for the first time, because he hasn't said it for a long time, uh, love you, bro, and I'll speak to you again soon. So I know that he's in a slightly better place, and I love that because he's engaged with me again, and I get to, you know, I, I will, I will, I will hold on to that, and I will nurture it, and I, I love that word nurture. It's such a big thing. We nurture everything, don't we? But um, but I will nurture. 
that with him and uh, and 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 hopefully bring him back out because we do hibernate a little bit to it's just a, a there's a fine line between hibernating to deal with your problems and ignoring your problems and i think he's dealt with his problems a little bit and and he's he's open for re-engagement so anyway thank you for listening feedback's always welcome and um i look forward to talking to you again soon and i hope this podcast was a little bit better than my droney mess from the last time but thank you for listening everyone and uh yeah take care